I have some disturbing stats I want to share with you about fatherless homes. Fatherless homes in our society today is endemic. It is such a huge problem. Patrick Bet David has a lot of things to say about it. He's got some stats. We're going to watch those stats. We're going to react, and we're going to talk about it right now. Let's get right to it. And by the way, some of the stats, you know, oh, I've seen this before. I'm going to tell you when you read some of these stats, you're going to sit there and say, that is insane. By the way, these stats are from 2021 of the impact a father makes in a child upbringing, both a girl and a boy. Like I said, disturbing, but you will be shell-shocked with the stats. 2021, it's 2024. So much has changed since then, it's only gotten worse. Fatherlessness in America is profound, and I think Patrick's gonna talk a little bit more about it, but just being in the home and being a father and being present isn't enough. If you're on your phone all the time, it's gonna cause just as much problem, if not more, than being completely absent. So let's dive into some of these tips that, and uh, techniques that he's talking about here. The U.S. has the highest rate of children living in a single parent household of any nation in the world. Wow, any nation in the world, that's absolutely amazing. About 80% of single parent homes are led by single mothers at a rate of 23% of children living with one parent and no other adult. The United States stands over three times the world average of 7% of children raised by one parent. For reference, the number stands at 3% in China, 4% in India. Where's that coming from? Why are there so many fatherless homes in America and what's the challenge, what's causing that? There's a lot of different things that can go into it. You know, I was a firefighter in an inner city area here in Colorado for about 10 years and I saw quite a bit when I got my training. I was in the south side of Chicago. The one thing that struck me the most as I was getting my training in the summertime in 2006 in the south side of Chicago was all of the kids at two in the morning that were out walking around and doing things when they should be in bed and asleep. And you know they were always walking with their mother. I didn't see a single father anywhere anytime I was out there. The same held true when I was with my fire department here in Colorado. Fathers were just not around. I don't understand why it is, but it seems like when these fathers get a woman pregnant, they get scared and they run away and they don't take responsibility for what they have created and this beautiful life they have helped to bring into this world. So they scoot. It's such a darn shame and it causes this cascade of challenges moving downstream for when those kids get older, they think, well, gosh, my dad did this, so I'm just gonna continue to do the same. I'm going to impregnate this girl. I'm gonna move on, I'm gonna live my life. And it perpetuates the cycle and it causes a huge amount of problems. Let's get back to Patrick. Let me continue. Even for children with a father present in the home, the average school age boy only spends about 30 minutes per week with one-on-one -on -one conversations with his father. For comparison, the same boy on average will spend about 44 hours a week watching television, playing video games, and surfing the internet. So the amount of time that you spend with a kid one-on-one -on -one is so darn low. And that's just a challenge and a project that we all have to work on. You and me, Dad, I know I struggle with it all the time. There's so much that's hitting us left and right. Social media, YouTube, all of these different things that are going on around us. Taking the time to sit down and chat with your son or your daughter is so darn important. It's really challenging for me, especially because my wife and I, we co-work. She works in the evening. I work mostly during the day, so when she goes to work, I'm now doing dinner, I'm doing a lot of the things around the house in the evening. So it's very challenging for me to be making that dinner and stopping to get down on one knee and get face to face with my three kids and talk to them and enjoy that time with them. That's something that I absolutely need to try to do and improve upon more and it just shows that barely a half an hour is spent with these kids and it really causes a bit of a profound challenge and it goes back to what we talked about initially right if you're not able to be present in the house it's almost as bad as not being present at all so that's something to really think about as we're moving forward we'll get back to it continue 90 percent of all homeless and runaway children 63 percent of teen suicides 85 percent of children and teens with behavior disorders come from fatherless homes. Wow, that's a massive statistic. So really, when you have the homelessness, the teens, and the runaways, 
they all don't have fathers as homes. I mean, it's pretty easy to see why, right? There is a difference between a man and a woman. A woman is the one who helps to nurture, who can help to facilitate a lot of the learning in the household. But having a father to be able to keep and hold your children accountable is absolutely critical. And it's something that obviously isn't happening enough. So if we can help to facilitate having both of those parents in that household, even if it's a challenge, I know being married with my wife was great before we had kids. It is an absolute challenge with that first kid, second. And then when you add on a third kid, your life is just all about survival. And it's so easy to just back off, let your wife take charge of certain things while you are sitting over here, just helping out where you can. But if you can merge those two and have you be the authority figure when it's necessary and be that father figure that can push forward with things while the wife and the mother is doing what she's best at, you put those two together, it makes a huge difference even if it's challenging, something that you should definitely work on to improve your relationship with your wife first and then your relationship as a father and a mother second. And I've got more video content on the channel that you can look at. Subscribe and you can see some more of that as we move forward. Let's get back into PBD. Next, fatherlessness likewise has a direct link to teen pregnancy and sexual activity. Roughly 70% of teenage pregnancies come from women raised in a fatherless home. 70%. That's such a shame. Do you have a daughter? I have one daughter. I have two boys. I have the one daughter. I can't imagine her getting pregnant out of wedlock, not having that father or that boyfriend or a husband there to help out. If the father isn't in the house to teach the daughter, the good things, what they should look for in a man, what they should not look for in a man, and how to stand up for what they believe is right, then they're going to fall prey to these men and these boys across the country who will do nothing and stop at nothing to take advantage of them, and then they're left out on their own raising that child. It's just such a horrible statistic. And 70% of those unplanned teen pregnancies come from fatherless homes. Gosh, what does that say? On the whole... Fatherless kids are 20 times more likely to be incarcerated and 11 times more likely to exhibit violent behavior than children from two-parent household. This is such an important point. And again, I saw it when I was in those inner cities responding on an ambulance to these shootings in the middle of the night, in the middle of the day, when we would have these individuals, oftentimes it was a boy or maybe a teenager that was involved in these shootings in that south side of Chicago, you show up, all they have is a mother in the household. And they don't have that father figure to show them what is right to help to channel that energy. And if we're not facilitating teaching them what they need to know, how they need to act when they get frustrated, then who is? Somebody on the street's gonna be teaching them that. Their mother's probably overwhelmed. They have things that they can teach, but they can't teach the masculine components of how to act when you're in a situation where you feel like acting out. So being a father in that area to be able to help facilitate that good knowledge so that they don't cause that violent activity, absolutely huge. And having that father in the home is the key component to it. 20 times more, okay? 20 times more. If a man and a wife raise a child, they're less likely to end up in jail, but they have the same chances as children raised by just their father. It, it, you may already be blown away by the stats before, so maybe come back and let me read this to you. Embrace for impact, if you missed it. Let me read it one more time. Listen, just stay with me. Don't get distracted, stay with me, listen. If a man and a wife raise a child, they're less likely to end up in jail, but they have the same chance as children raised by just their fathers. The husband and wife raise their kid. The chance of this kid going to jail is the same as just the father raising his kids. The problem is the single mother without a father in the picture. Yeah, I mean, you gotta have both of them, right? But having a single father in the picture, which is pretty rare anyway, you still have that chance of them going to jail because the father is not doing as well. Now, I have some very, very close friends who are single fathers and they co-parent and they do a lot of things very well together. I don't think that's really what we're talking about here. It's when you don't have those two people in the household, the mother, the father, they both have their roles and they both have to facilitate 
giving that child, that boy, that girl, the foundation they need to be able to move forward in the world. That is so huge, so darn important. That's why it's so important, if at all possible, even if you're struggling in your marriage, try to keep it together. Try to go back to the time when you got down on one knee to your girlfriend to get her to become your fiance. That is where you started. These kids are a wonderful, beautiful byproduct of it. But if you keep your core relationship well and intact, your children will see what it's like for a dad to treat his wife the way that she should be treated. And then they will in turn replicate that as they move forward. So focus on that marriage first, and then the kids will inevitably come and rise up to the level of that marriage as you move forward. Let me continue. Girls with no fathers have lower self-esteem. We can lower crime lower mental issues, help the economy, lower suicide rates, and decrease homelessness by bringing back the family nucleus. There are things- Two points there, so important. First, girls, low self-esteem. If there's no father in that house, all they see is the mother who is challenged by raising the family all on her own. She doesn't have that male figure to see how to be treated and how to rise their self-esteem up. It's an absolute challenge, and the things that they do see are on social media and the Andrew Tates of the world and those around who objectify women. And all they think is, I have to dress up, I have to look sexy, and I have to impress the other boys in my class. Otherwise, I'm not going to be worthy of them in the future. If there's a male in that household, that is going to be absolutely critical for that attitude to be checked to say you are amazing as you are focus on yourself don't worry about those boys all of that will come so huge and that second part the family nucleus having a nuclear family is so taboo these days there are so many people in the political cultural environment that say we don't want a nuclear family those are horrible things to have having a mother having a father having them married and happy and having them raising their children as one unit is so darn important. If you break that up, it causes obvious challenges as they move forward and growing into their adolescence and further on. Yeah, the other thing, we're so darn busy with our kids. We put them into sports. We have after school activities. We have homework to do. There's so many things that we're doing that maybe if we're lucky we have dinner together and even then are we spending that time on our phone or are we spending that time talking with our kids? Making that deliberate time to spend with our children can really help to solidify that nuclear family and to move forward even further and faster. Is it the fact that, hey, you know, we can't really bring church and schools and pray and all this stuff? I don't know, maybe that's not something you agree with. Maybe it is, maybe we need those values and principles, but it's somebody's fault in America that this is happening. This is purely a systemic issue that we're having. This cannot be like in, you know, you know no, it's, it's, really, it's really the community, it's the parents, it's the culture, it's all this other stuff. No, standards are standards. We're sitting there not educating. That's no, not a big deal, go ahead and do that. That's oh, not a big deal, go ahead and do that. That's oh, not a big deal, go ahead and do that. No, standards have dropped and the numbers are shown. If, if we judged a country based on how many kids are being raised by fatherless homes that's producing crimes at the levels that we're getting, sex during teenage pregnancy, abortion, suicide, incarceration. Maybe we ought to look at this. Maybe this is very important. Maybe our educational system sucks. Maybe. Kids spend more time around teachers than they do around their parents. Maybe, who do we blame? The responsibility has to lie on the nation. Maybe we're either too much involved or we're not selling, take your time to get married, take your time before you have sex with someone, take your time before you get pregnant, take your time before you have a baby, protect yourself, stay home, do not just go out there and have unprotected sex. Maybe we're not talking about this kind of stuff. Maybe we are, maybe we're not. The stat says we're not selling it in the right way. Yeah, you know, that's so important. And it, I challenge myself, especially with my kids right now, is how much do I have those conversations with them? How forthright am I with them? And what I've come to find is my parents never talked about anything. When I was growing up, we didn't talk about finances. We didn't talk about politics. We didn't talk about anything that was adult level in the household. That was in the 1980s and early 1990s. Today, 
My parents didn't have the issue of social media, of YouTube, of X, of all of these different things and of teachers with agendas trying to force that down onto the kids. We now, as the parent, I believe have to integrate and push away all of those other forces by being more direct with our kids and saying, these are the challenges that I believe that we should pursue. These are the foundations of our family. Don't have sex. We don't go off and cause violence. Um, you interact with your peers in a certain way, and when somebody says something to you, you can question it because that's the only way that we can push through this web of trash oftentimes that is being forced on upon our children. So it's something that's super, super important from my perspective at least. We're not selling it in the right way and we're paying a price for it. If you're in a community that crime is high, hello, you're feeling it. That's the stance. So the next time you see a father that takes their job as a father seriously, you can actually say, you know how we see somebody in military uniform? Guess what you say? Hey, thank you for your service. What do you mean? Hey, man, stats, 23% fatherlessness. And you're there with your kids? Thank you for your service. Being a father is tough. Good for you guys. Husband and wife trying to make this work. Marriage is tough. Salute. You make my life better and safer by raising good kids. Salute to you. Maybe. Maybe we ought to give those awards. Maybe we need to kind of recognize Father of the Year Award a bigger deal. Man, if I ran a state or a country, we, we would be recognizing certain behavior and turning great fathers and mothers into heroes. I so agree. How often do you see a dad by himself holding that baby, shopping in the grocery store, shopping at Costco? If you're that dad and that's why you're watching this channel, that's fantastic. Give that other dad that you see that looks like he's struggling, but he's out there giving it a shot, give him props. Tap on the shoulder, nice job, dad. He'll appreciate it. I know that I appreciate it sometimes when I'm out doing that. We need to stick together as fellow dads and we need to support our other dads that are out there that are doing it. More importantly, community is so darn important, especially among us dads. It's extremely lonely out there. I hope you would probably agree with that. We focus on providing financially for our family, paying the bills, making sure that our housing orders are in effect, having our job and doing with all of those stressors and then coming home to a wife that's stressed with our children. And it's such a challenge to balance all of those things. Having a community, having fellow dads that are like-minded, both culturally, politically, financially, that you can strive to improve to, not people that are down here, Get that community around you and hold each other accountable. When you see your peer dad that's struggling, reach out to him, give him a hand up, see what you can do to support. Just the other day, I had a couple friends come over. They had a rough day. Hey, we got dinner, we got frozen pizza, we'll put it on, let's just all hang out in the backyard and we will talk, we'll have a beer, we'll let our kids run around and we'll decompress because this dad thing is damn hard. And if we do it together, it makes it just that much easier and it makes sure that our kids see that and they are much better as a result of it. What do you do to help out to make sure that you are not that dad that is absent? Put them in the comments below. Let's have this conversation together as dads in this great community of ours. Come on back if you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you wanna see more videos like this, you can subscribe, like the video if you like. And if you're interested in some more information, I've got a great video that's queued up right here. Take a look at it. Hope you have a good day and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.